Welcome to the Buddhist Boot Camp Podcast. Our intention is to awaken, enlighten, enrich, and inspire a simple and uncomplicated life. Discover the benefits of mindful living with your host, Timber Hawkeye. Faithfully Religionless is my second book. The first one was called Buddhist Boot Camp. When I left the corporate world and moved to Hawaii, I started emailing my friends and family a short letter each month to let them know what's going on in my life. About eight years later, my friend Kim suggested that I share those emails on a blog, simply because she found the letters inspirational and she figured that other people would benefit from reading them as well. And as it turns out, Kim was right. The blog became a book published by HarperCollins, and many people found the simple message in those emails refreshing, inspirational, and even more importantly, motivational. I say motivation is more important because inspiration without action is just entertainment, and my invitation is for us to go beyond thinking that something is a good idea to actually implementing it into our daily lives. The chapters in Buddhist Boot Camp can be read in any order and are short and easy to understand. Each story and inspirational quote offers mindfulness-enhancing techniques that anyone can relate to, reinforcing what we intuitively already know but have somehow forgotten. Following is the introduction from the book, along with a couple of sample chapters to give you a taste. Enjoy. To make a long story short, I sat there in front of the Tibetan Lama, wearing my maroon robes after years of studying Buddhism. With all due respect, I said, I don't believe the Buddha ever intended for his teachings to get this complicated. (laughs) My teacher looked around at all the statues of deities with multiple arms and he chuckled. He said, the Buddha didn't do this, the Tibetan culture did. This is their way. Why don't you try Zen? I think you would like it. So I bowed out of the temple, took off my robes, and moved into a Zen monastery far from home. Zen was simpler, that much was true. The walls were blank and I loved it. But the teachings were still filled with all the dogma that sent me running from religion in the first place. There are many incredible books out there that cover all aspects of religion, philosophy, psychology, and physics, but I was looking for something less academic, so to speak. I was looking for something inspirational that people today would not only have the attention span to read all the way through, but actually understand and also implement into their daily lives. I pictured a simple guide to being happy, and in it, just two words. Be grateful. That's because gratitude has a way of turning what we have into enough. And that is the basic idea behind Buddhist Boot Camp. The short chapters convey everything I've learned over the years in a way that is easy to understand without you needing to know anything about Buddhism ahead of time. In fact, the book is not so much about being a Buddhist, it's about being a Buddha. It is very possible, and perfectly okay, for someone who is Catholic, Muslim, atheist, or Jewish, for example, to still find the Buddha's teachings inspirational. You can love Jesus, repeat a Hindu mantra, and still go to temple after morning meditation. Buddhism is not a threat to any religion, it actually strengthens your existing faith by expanding your love to include all beings. Boot camp is a training method, and Buddhism is all about training the mind. Many people claim they don't have time to meditate every morning, but they still want a spiritual guidance without any dogma or rituals attached. That is exactly what Buddhist boot camp provides in a quick and easy-to-digest format. You are now a soldier of peace in the army of love. Welcome to Buddhist Boot Camp. The following is a sample chapter from Buddhist Boot Camp called Love is the Recognition of Beauty. A flower doesn't stop being beautiful just because somebody walks by without noticing it, nor does it cease to be fragrant if its scent is taken for granted. The flower just continues to be its glorious self, elegant, graceful, and magnificent. Our mother nature has provided us with these immeasurably valuable teachers that blossom despite their short lifespan, stars that continue to shine even if we fail to stare at them, and trees that don't take it personally if we never bow down in gratitude for the oxygen they provide. We also have an incredible and unlimited capacity to love, but the question is, can we do it like a flower, without needing to be admired, adored, or even noticed? Can we open our hearts completely to give, forgive, celebrate, and joyfully live our lives without hesitation or any need for reciprocity? It seems like sometimes we go beyond taking things personally and are noticeably deflated when unappreciated. In fact, devastated, we wilt in sorrow and then attempt to guard ourselves by withholding. We use all sorts of protections and defenses. We get hurt, even angry, if our boss fails to recognize an astonishing feat, 
if a lover pulls their hand away, or when a friend forgets our birthday. Can you imagine a flower copying an attitude for not being praised, or the moon dimming its glow because we're too self-absorbed to notice it more often? So make an effort to shine no matter what, to love unconditionally and to be a kind and gentle soul, even when nobody is watching. And if you're so inclined, go ahead and hug the next tree that you see and say thank you. Everything has its beauty, but not everyone can see it. A quote by Confucius. Here is another sample chapter from Buddhist Boot Camp. This one is called What a Healthy Relationship Looks Like. Relationships are often misunderstood to be a simple commitment between two people, a dedication to each other with a sense of belonging to one another. Unfortunately, that kind of limited perspective breeds expectations, possessiveness, and disappointment, and it reeks of ownership, greed, ignorance, and selfish desire. A healthy relationship is an agreement between two people to support each other's spiritual practice. It is a vow to encourage each other's dedication, devotion, and path, free from attachment or expectations, yet full of caring and compassion. A healthy relationship is based on unconditional love, not one where your need is to possess. Although you put plenty of heart into it, you lose absolutely nothing by giving it away. If each person is equally dedicated to inspire, create, awaken, and enrich the lives of others, then there is no hidden agenda. It is far less important what one receives from the other as what one can give. Intimacy would suddenly surpass warmth and tenderness to also include patience, vulnerability, honesty, active listening, understanding, connection, and unwavering trust. There is a healing power inherent in this kind of union, and it is capable of a deep transformation for both people. It is an incredible opportunity to actually practice what we learn, from nonviolent communication to meditation, listening, mirroring, authenticity, resolve, radical honesty, appreciation, purpose, equality, celebration, and mutuality. A healthy relationship is a collaboration of sorts, two peaceful warriors spiritually supporting one another on their individual journeys to spread positivity and light. May we all close the gap between what we believe and how we act in the world. Love does not consist in gazing at each other, but in looking outward together in the same direction. A quote by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. If you enjoyed this book, please share it with a friend and join our Buddhist Bootcamp online community on Facebook and on Instagram. Aloha. Timber Hawkeye is the best-selling author of Faithfully Religionless and Buddhist Bootcamp. For additional information, please visit BuddhistBootcamp.com where you can order autographed books to support the Prison Library Project, watch Timber's inspiring TED Talk, and join our monthly mailing list. We hope you have enjoyed this episode and invite you to subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions. Thank you for being a soldier of peace in the Army of Love.